Hey guys, here we are with um, the fight between Oleksandr Gocek, man, I don't know his name, and Unieski Gonzalez. Uh, this was on the Vasily Lomachenko um, Sosa undercard, and I was really excited of, about this fighter. Um, I only watched the first two rounds, and then I took a restroom break and missed the third round. And I just the whole time I was there, I was like, "Oh man, I just know this is gonna—he's gonna get him. He's gonna—he's gonna catch him with something." And uh, lo and behold, I missed it. But I was able to find someone who had the fight and download it. Um, so thank you to whoever I stole this from. You've got a couple tags on the video: Storm and some dragon thing over there, and. Uh, is that a Tuscan Raider? I don't know what that is in the bottom right corner. But anyway, um, and this is this this fighter has me really excited. He obviously he's still learning his craft, you know, and that's why you have um, that's why you have rankings, and that's why some fighters, like a lot of American fighters, go the long route. You know, they'll have like twenty something, thirty something, forty, you know, thirty two something fights or whatever before they wind up having a. Uh, a world title fight and everyone's like pushing them along and I don't think that that's correct I, I, you know like um, Errol Spence right now having a title a title fight already so early in his career you know I mean maybe give him I don't remember how many fights he has at the moment but when people were shouting for it a couple years ago a title fight title fight he he wasn't ready um, and um, you know you, you really want to develop your craft and in this video we're gonna get a good look at some some boxing craft uh, I will do all three rounds uh, there's something in the third round I really wanted to point out um, so we'll do all three rounds but uh, let's go ahead and get into this um, and it starts off you know pretty innocuously right but uh, but not really so the first thing I want to point out is um, a lot of times you'll have some fighters, they'll stand in front of each other for a long time and they'll be like, oh, who's going to make the first move? Is he going to let me counter? Am I, is he going to try to counter me? What's he going to counter me with? What am I going to counter him with? What punches is he going to throw for me to counter? And they spend a lot of time standing in front of each other, doing nothing, thinking about this, right? Figuring out who's going to lead, who's going to, who's going to counter, um, and looking for specific openings that are already open. Um, rather than making openings and one thing that lets you know that Oleksandr is a very high level fighter he's already passed that which is amazing for this point in his career um, is the fact that he immediately starts out looking for offense uh, and you see that right here jab jab and and Unieski stays in his high guard so what does he do he waits well first off it jab jab and he waits he gives him a second to punch very um Lomachenko like right remember letting them set up a rhythm so you can counter them because they want to you know put their hands on you too very common and what does he do right away after the jab jab waits and he goes jab jab and then he throws another jab and then he throws a right hand to the body already we we haven't even we can't even see the round timer yet you know it hasn't even it's not even five seconds into the round and he's already landed a, a right hand to the body uh, because he noticed that when he puts his hands up, or when he when he does the double jab, Gonzalez immediately puts up his high guard, right? Boom, boom, and then lands that great body shot. He does eat a jab, right? That sometimes that just happens, but he's setting punches up. You know, he put his gloves into his opponent's face, and then when he saw what his, how his opponent would react to this, like this right now, putting his high guard up again, when he sees how he reacts to him. He takes the offense that it creates, which is a right hand to the body, and uh, just really smart boxing. Rather than standing in front of his opponent, you know, for you know six minutes or whatever the first two rounds, um, he starts setting up his offense. You know, showing his opponent something, um, seeing how they react to it, and then starts landing punches off of it, trusting that boxing skill. And here he does it again, and then. His opponent, you know, same thing, puts his gloves up. Now he expects a jab. Look when he throws his left hook. He expects a jab, puts his high guard up, and eats a left hook out the outside. Uh, it's partially blocked, probably. Uh, and then right into a right-hand body shot. And Gonzalez still has his guard up. 
we're 20 seconds into this fight, and this guy's landed a couple jabs uh, and three power shots. Already 20 seconds into a fight. Um, that's high-level boxing. Um, then again, he jabs, and he... Uh, this is important. Um, he jabs, and then he goes to counter-jab, and if you look at where Gonzalez's head is right now, that's right where he tried to punch him. Um, but Gonzalez is doing something really well. He jabs and then throws that right hand to the body. But uh, even though uh, Alexander misses the jab, he controls his head and then pushes off. And he doesn't do it excessively. You know, a lot of fighters like Andre Ward would have crowded him instead, right? He missed the jab and then he would have just fallen in and put him in a headlock, right? Or tried to body up and stop him. But this guy's comfortable in his boxing skill. He knows that that's going to work and he just pushes him off. Another important thing, this is really interesting. Uh, as soon as he gets to this part of the ring, right, where you want to counter, there's nowhere to go behind him. Uh, Gonzalez feints a left hook, gets him to bring his guard up, right, and then throws it right to the body. And you can't, like, s super clearly see if it lands or if it hits the elbow It's because it's behind. But it's, it's really interesting because you see that he's a high-level guy, too. He's already setting his shots up. You know, not 20 seconds into the fight, he's thrown a couple right hands. He's committed to them as well. Um, and he's fainted before each one of them. So both of these guys are pretty high-level guys. Um, in spite of, you know, Unieski's um, quote-unquote loss to Jean Pascal, I didn't see the fight, but I heard that he should have got the decision. Um, Gonzalez, that is. Um, and I don't know what happened with the other guy. I don't, I don't know. But um, anyway, back to the fight. So some, some jabs. You can see that Gonzalez is trying to counter his jab. And look at this. This is just a few seconds after uh, he notices that he's moving into the corner. He doesn't want to be in the corner. But he runs to the middle of the ring right here. Um, where Gonzalez had him caught on the ropes and unloaded that combination. And he immediately runs there to stop Gonzalez from um, cutting the ring off on him uh, and letting loose with another wild combination, a way of stopping his offense, because uh, he knows that he wants to do that. 30 seconds into the fight, and he's, he's already that far into it. Some more jabbing and stuff, right, the, the usual. And then, again, boom, brilliant. So... Alexander knows he wants to land the right hand, right? Um, Unieski wants to land the right hand. So what does he do? When he does jab with him, he counters his jab. Look at his right glove. Look at how he brings it up to his to his chin right there. So he can catch the overhand right so it doesn't hit him on the, on the chin. Um, really smart. If you look at the angling, uh, Gonzalez is still punching to the body. But look at as he finishes that punch and... Um, Alexander now, with, with the right hand out of the way, um, he's expecting a left hook and instantly brings it from the left side or the right side of his chin, or the, yeah, the left side of his chin to the right side of his chin to catch a left hook. Very, very intricate, you know, boom, and then bam, throws a left hook and then throws the right hand, and it's not a big right hand, right? But he hits him, touches him right there, and then he holds him, you know, to control his head so he can escape and circle out. Uh, just really great boxing from him. Just really, really smart stuff. Uh, he does make some mistakes in this round, and we'll get to see that too, and I'll, I'll kind of talk to you about why um, uh, why it's important. But um, we'll, we'll get there when we get there. Again, Jabs doesn't get a hand on him and expects the, the right hand and instantly brings his guard back. Now, this was interesting. Throws, and then he goes to jab at him, control his head, uh, and that hand, that right hand was like so close to getting him, you know. So we'll see how Alexander deals with that. And this is interesting, right? Oh my God, there's so much going on. We're not even a minute into the fight, and we're ten minutes into this film study. But um, here he he stops because he knows that this is where this is where Gonzalez wants him, right? Remember last time he attacked right here, so he goes to feint a punch, and. Uh, Gonzalez has only done this one time, but Alexander has already picked up on it and knows, hey, he's going to do this, catches him with a left hook while he's opening up after his fainted jab. And then they kind of wrestle in here a little bit, and uh, 
Alexander doesn't have the greatest control over him, and Gonzalez is doing the right thing, trying to control his head so he can punch him. You know, if he catches him with a punch and knocks him out, uh, no one's going to say, hey, he was doing this. They're just going to be like, oh, he knocked him out. So it's a fair hedge. But anyway, again, now Alexander's standing in front of him, jabs, and look at what Gonzalez does. Instead of staying there with his high guard, because he realizes what Alexander is doing, getting him to commit to a high guard uh, to react to it, and then just unleash his punches around, he starts ducking it now. And he's, and, and uh, Alexander's like, oh, uh, hmm, maybe I need to work on something else. So he just takes a step back after seeing it, starts showing him again, but he's still ducking it, jabbing at him some more, using some head, now Gonzalez is using more head movement so he doesn't get trapped in the high guard. Do, do, do. And now he just shows it to him. And Gonzalez can't, you know, keep that up the whole time. He's never going to get any punches off. So now he does go back to his high guard. And Alexander says, Okay, I see. I got you now. Shows him a jab, some more jabs. And then gets him to commit to a high guard again with the double jab. And boom, lands a left hook to the head. Just really smart boxing. Um, and that's all. All of that is predicated off of the fact that he's setting these punches up. He's looking for them. He's he's actively searching for opportunities to punch rather than waiting around. You know, and and uh, it's interesting because if you notice through the rest of the round, without those little engagements, for the most part, they're landing pretty evenly. You know, they're both landing a lot of jabs. Um, Gonzalez are like a little less less frequent, but I think he lands a jab there. Now he got close, but he didn't. He didn't get him right there. Um, but but it's a pretty even round, aside from from those little flurries that he sets up by forcing a high guard. And now he gets him to bend down after seeing that he's changing head slots, right, and um, trying to get out of the way of those double jabs, and gets him to commit to a high guard again, and throw some punches and then look at how on the outside or at the end of the the combination he kind of controls his head like that really smart boxing getting out from in front of that guy boom lands a shot and then holds him so he can get out of the way you know really smart stuff because you you never want to stand in front of a guy after you throw a combination oh and that's sometimes um that right there, controlling someone after you throw punches. A lot of times when people say, oh, he dominated this guy, he dominated that guy, and the fights don't super, they don't look super close because one guy's throwing a lot more punches and then controlling after. Um, uh, it's because of things like that. And even though Alexander, like, he landed, like, maybe one of those punches, um, it makes the round look so much less even, right? Because even though he landed only a, one of those punches, uh, he was able to control him and stop his opponent from even letting punches go. Uh, so it creates this like this imagery in your head where you're just like, oh, he's just dominating this guy. Even though when they're not utilizing those tactics and they're just using utilizing like um, regular, like I'll say like, oh God, don't kill me for this, but like classic boxing, um, and they're standing in front of each other, their jab game is pretty pretty even. So anyway. Um, Again, just moving, circling, doesn't want to get caught in there. It kind of looked like he was um, he was kind of trying to bait him when he was uh, on the, the ropes, trying to get him to commit to another punch. But Gonzalez right there, uh, paying attention. He's like, ah, that didn't work out too well. Um, and now he does commit to a punch. He misses the counter. Good. And that's really good head movement from Gonzalez. He throws the punch. And like a responsible professional athlete, um, he moves after he throws the punch, and then Alexander controls him, and then kind of taps him on the back of the head with the right hand. It's not a real punch. Um, kind of keeps him off balance, but he just kind of wants to keep his hands on him so he can't, like, whip around and catch him with a shot. Um, but yeah, anyway, this is also really interesting. Again, look at, he, he sees the right hand coming when he jabs, right? And look at his his right glove he gets it over near his chin and he's able to he's able to catch that punch if it was going to land 
Um, just beautiful, smart boxing. He's he's doing so much. Let's go ahead and move on. I was checking my text message. Sorry, guys. Again, jabbing with them. And, like, the jab game is fine. Um, it's okay to jab with your opponent. Uh, and he gets this responsible defense and get his right hand out in front of him. Um, and Gonzalez, you know, so far, he's not making any adjustments to that. I'm not even sure if he understands that he's able to catch it. And he can catch the jab, too. So it's like, oh, yeah, he does it right there. Doesn't catch that one, but he catches this jab. Uh, and it allows Alexander to to win this win all of the exchanges because Gonzalez is only throwing, you know, the overhand right and the jab at the moment. Um, and Alexander is able to to take that away from him. Boom, and again, just brilliant. Sets up the punches with these throwaway jabs, these probing jabs. Oh, that's what you call it. I don't know if I said it earlier, but he probes him with these jabs finds the openings and then lands the right to the body and the left hook right here he goes for another left hook gets it in there just lets a whole combination off just you know and it looks like he's dominating him and without this probing without this this part of his craft right and that's that's what this is 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 part of his craft this is probably how he approaches all his fights you know you go in there you show him the jab see how they react to it and then you throw punches after um, but, um, oh, I lost my train of thought. Uh, but, but it, it stops the staleness of a lot of fights, right? If you notice how, well, I'll, I'll talk more about this at the end of the round. Again, you know, throws a jab and he kind of just leans back and sees. And then, uh, Gonzalez does that thing where he, where he waits till he's crossing that little path of the ring. He has nowhere to go, commits to a punch, but... Alexander gets his gloves up and he's able to uh, to catch the punches and now he's like okay well I'm not getting away uh, cleanly and without any control over him he just kind of hugs him you know you don't want to see a lot of it of that during the course of a fight um, and thank God you know Alexander doesn't do that a lot oh. and then this is where um, things kind of like don't work out for him he commits to this right hand he hasn't really set it up he doesn't faint before and a big guy like Gonzalez just, you know, he knows what to do if someone just commits to a punch. And, and that's why when you see, well, we'll talk, about, we'll talk about this first. Again, shows him the double jab. He starts dipping down and unloads offense. He doesn't get anything off there, but he's, he's watching him. But anyway, I want to go back to this right here. Um... This is what happens right here when you don't set your punches up. Um, when somebody, like two fighters, they come out and they immediately just start throwing bombs with no feints, with no probing, um, with no, you don't change your guard, you know, your active guard to make it look like you're thinking of something, you know, you don't, you know, go to high guard, to low guard, to like the Mayweather shell, um, change levels, dip to the left, dip to the right. When you don't do something to make your opponent think and you just commit to a punch, they know how to counter it. They, they've seen a right hand before. Uh, and when they, when they can see that that's all that's coming or that it's just coming straight at them without any setup, they, especially someone like um, Gonzalez who has 300 and, you know, almost 400 amateur fights, winning like nearly like 350 of them, I think, like 353 or something. Um, that's why when... Uh, well, they know they know what to do, and that's why when you see like a lot of like I'll say like C level fighters is how I grade them, um, like Andre Berto, uh, like Victor Ortiz. Um, I don't want to say too many because I know people are over those guys, and people you know they have like fanfare with a lot of fighters. So I don't I don't want to you know make anybody seem like their fighter is not a great fighter or whatever. But so we'll stick with like Andre Berto. They don't. They don't set their shots up a lot. You know, they're like very, I'll say, conventional, you know, fighters, straightforward. Um, and that's why a lot of times in their fights, when they fight people like each other, there's, there's so much, uh, quote-unquote, feeling out. You know, they're trying to figure out who's going to lead, who's going to do this. Because any of those fighters has so much experience fighting that they know all the counters to a right hand. They know all the counters to 
a left hook if someone leads with that, or even just a jab, you know, just going in straight up, um, throwing up, th- just committing to punches. Uh, and that's why they spend so much time um, feeling each other out, uh, is because they don't know how to do what what Alexander was doing at the beginning of this round, which is probing with the punch. You know, like if he were to probe with that punch in front of somebody, and then the right hand comes, because he didn't commit to this punch, he could do exactly what Gonzalez did. And that's why when he's probing, Gonzalez doesn't just throw a crazy huge right hand, because then he's in the same boat that that he just found uh, Alexander in. Uh, so, and I think that, that stuff like that, you know, people fighters who do that and look for their offense like that that's what separates b-level fighters from c-level fighters and fighters who do who do things like this probing that's what separates the b-level fighters from the c-level fighters the really good fighters um and based off the performance in the first round i would definitely uh at the moment give alexander like a b-level rating easily um uh, Gonzalez kind of does seem, even though he's making adjustments in the fight, um, he's not setting his punches up super well. You know, he's giving one one feint or he's giving one um, throwaway punch and then committing to a huge punch. Um, not actually, like, you know, feinting and then seeing what opens up and then throwing punches there, but but fainting and just guessing where they where they're going to be and like you know a lot you're going to beat a lot of fighters like that um but you really need to look at your opponent and be able to figure out like you know watch your opponent for for their actual weaknesses and such um the ones that they give you um and that's that's what's going to separate you know b level fighters from c level fighters um Anyway, I hope you guys liked the breakdown. I hope I didn't drone on too much uh, towards the end. I think I did. You know, 22 minutes for a three-minute round might be a little excessive. But um, the next couple rounds will be a little quicker. Anyway, uh, like, comment, and subscribe. uh, And let me know what you think. Uh, Thanks, guys.